Uh, but there is scripture for all this, and that's listed on your handouts that you can get. Uh, so creation is the beginning of time, right? So that first line, up till the cross, is the whole Old Testament period up to the coming of Christ. So this is not to scale, by the way. Uh, but so all the Old Testament prophets, uh, Abraham, Isaac, uh, all the way through, uh, they, all that happens right up to the cross. There's a lot of prophecies there that are fulfilled. And then Jesus comes. This is the gospel. It says in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, Christ died, was buried, and is resurrected. And thus, overcoming sin and death, and he forgives us and he offers that to us. We receive that by faith. That's the gospel. That's the cross. We live in the church age. So you could write on here, right around church age, a little star, you are here. Okay? So that's where we live. Now, I believe that the church will be raptured before the tribulation. Raptured means we are going to be caught up with Christ, or we are going to be caught up in the air and meet Christ in the air. The trumpet will sound, uh, the dead in Christ will rise, uh, Christ will meet the church in the air. This is the rapture of the church. And I believe that happens before the tribulation. The tribulation is a seven-year period. Uh, Daniel's 70 weeks kind of outlines that. Uh, that's a time of trouble and distress in the world. Uh, there are uh, bowls that are poured out. There are uh, all kinds of things happen during that seven-year period. That seven years is divided in half, and there should be a halfway mark. But right around three and a half years, the man of lawlessness is revealed, and then uh, it gets a lot worse for the last three and a half years of the tribulation. Now, some people, and brothers and sisters, believing brothers and sisters, and they may be right, believe that there is a mid-tribulation rapture. So the world is bad, and then it gets really bad. Uh, the Antichrist is revealed. The church is raptured right at that point. If you talk to a lot of people living in difficult places in the world right now, they would say, we're already in the tribulation. So I don't know. but uh, And there are some people who believe that the church lives through the tribulation, through all the horrible things. I really don't want to, so I'm a pre uh, tribulation rapture guy. But some people believe in a post tribulation rapture that the church is raptured right before the Battle of Armageddon. So the rapture is the church taken up, meeting Christ. And by the way, that's not the second coming, that's meeting Christ in the air. Then the tribulation, seven years. And then the Battle of Armageddon. There is a valley in Israel, and there's a place called Megiddo. And that's where the a uh, battle of Armageddon is going to happen, we believe. Uh, it's going to be horrible. Uh, Christ and all of the forces of heaven are come to do battle with Satan and all his forces. And there's going to be a horrible battle. The blood is going to be up to the horse's bridles in that valley. It's going to be mass destruction of some sort. And Christ is going to win. <laughs> we already know he wins. So what side do you want to be on? Uh, Christ comes back. This is the second coming of Christ. And that ushers in the millennium. The millennium is a 1,000 year reign in which God shows us what it would be like for Christ to reign on earth. And so there is a 1,000 years. It's called the millennium. Uh, Satan is chained in the bottomless pit. At the end of the millennium, he's loosed and there is a judgment that takes place. Uh, and he is thrown into the fiery, bottomless pit, and then we enter the eternal state, and there's a new Jerusalem, new heaven, and a new earth. So that's, that's end-time theology, and so uh, this is all pretty much agreed upon that Christ is coming back, uh, that there is a rapture of the church, that uh, there will be a time of tribulation, and that there is a millennium. And so... Uh, some people believe that the tribulation happens at the end of the millennium, and they're post-millennial. Uh, so, but uh, there are varieties of ways. And once again, whatever God does, I'm in favor of it. We here's what I learned on 9/11. Everything can change in one day, and 
who knows how this all works. God does. This makes sense to me from what I read from Scripture, and I encourage you to get a handout, look up all the Scriptures, Revelation. And actually what we're talking about is what's called the Olivet Discourse. And so you heard that from Matthew 24. It's also in Luke 17 and Mark 13. But Jesus is on the Mount of Olives, and he tells the disciples, here's what the end is going to be like. Okay? So uh, that's that. And I want to just share with you uh, how we will know that the end is coming. So Jesus says, you guys can look at the sky and read the signs. You shouldn't be surprised. So I think he's referring to this phrase, uh, red sky at night, sailors delight, right? Red sky in morning, sailors take warning. So we know certain things just by looking at the skies. A storm is coming. And he says we should know, we should not be surprised when the end comes. So here's the problem. Uh, wait, that's God calling now. <laughs> Tell him we don't know how it works. <laughs> Here's the problem. I think when Adolf Hitler was in power and we were going through World War II, I think a lot of people said, this is the end, right? Uh, Hitler's the Antichrist. Goebbels is the false prophet. Uh, and we have had Stalin, and we've had all kinds of craziness in our world. And for whatever reason, God said, not yet, okay? So that could still happen. This, there could be a revival. I'm praying for revival. There could be a revival. America could, could get itself right spiritually. God could do amazing things. And uh, we, it, the end may be far off, but here's my thinking. This is not the end, but you can see it from here. And I wouldn't be surprised if Christ came in my lifetime. But I'm getting kind of old, and I'm, I'm going to be going home one of these days. And maybe Christ won't come yet. And it's his choice. He'll come when he's ready. And uh, I'm thankful that he hasn't come because I know a lot of people that don't know Jesus yet. And I want them to know Jesus. And uh, I think that's part of the reason for the tribulation, that those who don't know him will realize how serious it is and they will, there will be many who will come to Christ during the tribulation, I think. But uh, So anyways, these are seven signs that Jesus gave that the end is coming. So first of all, false prophets and Christ, false Christ. So you and I have seen false prophets and false Christ in our lifetime. We've seen Sun Young Moon in the Unification Church. We've seen Jim Jones in the People's Temple. We've seen David Koresh in the Branch Davidians. And you could go back in history. I'm sure people would say, we've seen Hitler. We've seen Lenin. We've seen Marshall Applewhite in Heaven's Gate. I mean, we've seen... These false messiahs rise up and betray many, and uh, people have gone after them. So number one, false prophets in Christ, that's happened. Wars and rumors of wars. Hello? I mean, just look at the news. Just watch the news for 24 hours. But you got Libya, Syria, Iran, Afghanistan, on and on it goes. Uh, just watch the news. Wars and rumors of wars are taking place. Famine and pestilence. You know that three and a half million people died in Somalia. Think about uh, what's happening around the globe. People suffering, struggling. Famines and pestilence is taking place all around our globe. Uh, earthquakes. So tsunamis have happened. Do you know that in, from the time of 1890 to 1900, during that period of time, there was only one earthquake on the globe? But do you know that during your lifetime, you have seen more earthquakes than the previous 510 years saw? There are earthquakes upon earthquakes. Now, you don't get earthquakes here too often, do you? That could just be doggone good preaching, <laughs> right? That, well, you think it's an earthquake and you're shaken. But uh, my son lives in, uh, in Pasadena. They get earthquakes. I lived in Washington State. We got earthquakes. We had Mount St. Helens. I mean, the world is exploding. And uh, Jesus says it's the, the earth is like having birth pains. And birth is coming. And, you know, in the fall, all of creation was marred, was damaged. And the earth is groaning to be restored under God's hand. A new heaven and a new earth uh, because the ravages of sin are pain havoc on the world. 
and so earthquakes happen. Tribulations. So if you've traveled, you know this is taking place, that the church is being persecuted. India, China, Africa, Russia, Muslim countries, the persecution of the church is enormous. And you and I are so fortunate to live in a country where we have freedom of speech. But even in America, it's getting harder to stand up for our faith. We can't celebrate Christmas, right? It's a, it's a holiday, but, you know, uh, things are getting worse and worse for Christians. Uh, I said last week, and I thought I should have explained this more, but I have been at baptisms. I was at a baptism in India where they had armed guards surrounding the group. And I thought, well, that would be a great witness. wonder if we just shot everybody. But... Uh, they have been attacked when they do outdoor baptisms. The radical Hindus would come and actually come with guns and knives and attack people who were being baptized. So just as a protection, they had armed guards at our baptism. I thought, that's crazy. I have talked to people uh, in India, especially a couple of people I can remember talking to who when they became Christians, their family disowned them. One man told me about his family poisoning him and sending him out in the streets in hopes that he would get hit by a car and totally disowned. Uh, we don't know about the freedoms we have. But around the world, uh, to say I'm a follower of Jesus is a dangerous thing in many places in the world. Yes, tribulation is happening. Love will grow cold. Is that happening today? Uh, you know, as a follower of Jesus, it is so important for us to love people. Uh, people are not loved in our culture and in our world, and people are getting isolated. But, you know, around the world, there is terrorism taking place and uh, killing of children, and it's nothing. And love has grown cold. Okay, I'll tell you this. In my own uh, gated community, I got a hate letter from the association because weeds were growing up between my pavers, and this really bothered me because I thought, why wouldn't somebody just come and talk to me rather than send me a letter that says, if I don't take care of this within so much time, it would be $100 a day. And You know, I, I thought, I want to talk to that guy. <laughs> Probably a good thing I didn't talk to him, but <laughs> love has grown cold. And in our own neighborhoods, in our own families, uh, love has grown cold. And we don't treat people with love. We're as guilty as anybody. The church is horrible about this, but we need to be the loving presence of Jesus in this culture. Um, the gospel will be preached throughout the world. Do you know that uh, Wycliffe Bible uh, camps on this verse, Matthew 24, 14, that when every nation has heard the gospel, then the end will come. And in the Greek, the, the word for nation is ethnon. So they believe it means every ethnic group. And so Wycliffe is dedicated to translating the Bible into everyone's heart language. And we're getting close, folks. We're getting close to the gospel being proclaimed in every tribe and tongue. And amen, praise God, and we're going there. Uh, listen, television, radio, Bible translation, internet, the gospel is going forward. And it's not going to be long before everybody has heard. And, and so we're getting close to the end. These are the seven things that Jesus said needed to happen. I want to say they've all happened or they're all happening now or they could all happen in a day. It could be complete. Now, Paul, he gives us two characteristics that will happen right before the end. Number one is apostasy, which literally means some will abandon the faith. Uh, I hope you know that people are abandoning the faith. Churches are closing all around America. Uh, the gospel, which should be going forth and invading the gates of hell, is not going forth by the believers that need to be taking it forth. You and me. <laughs> We need to be sharing the good news of Jesus with everyone that will listen. We need to find ways to talk about the good news of Christ. Uh, I'm going to say this probably a couple times, but only one life, it will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Uh, you and I are arranging deck chairs on the Titanic 
right? The ship is going down. Let's get our priorities straight. Let's be saving lives. Let's, I mean, we don't save anybody, but the Holy Spirit can work through us and help us to be a witness of the truth. Uh, we are straightening pictures on the walls of burning buildings. It's insane. We need to get our priorities straight. And there are certain things that matter, and we need to understand what they are. And I'll tell you, there are only a few things that are eternal, God's word and people. And we need to invest in those things so that uh, God will be glorified. So apostasy. So in our culture, uh, people are saying there is no such thing as hell. Uh, homosexuality has become acceptable. Uh, there are godless behaviors that take place. Listen, that's a whole sermon in itself. I don't get the gay lifestyle. I don't get it. I know this, though. It's a lot more than a choice. There's biology involved. There's uh, psychology involved. And my heart breaks for people who are drawn to same-gender relationships. And I know this was not God's plan. I don't know what to do about it except love people. Right? That's what we're called to. But I'm telling you that when homosexuality becomes the, uh, it becomes the accepted standard in our culture, we're in deep trouble. So I'm, my heart is broken, and I don't know what to do about it, but to me it's a sign that the end is coming. And it is part of what I would call apostasy. Now listen to this. Tell me if this doesn't sound like today's newspaper. Uh, this is what Paul says. Godlessness will happen in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of ple pleasure rather than God, and they will have a form of godliness but deny its power. That's today's newspaper. <laughs> so this is what Paul says it's going to be like in the last days. That's why I say, I don't know if this is the end, but I think you can see it from here. Uh, we are living in uh, times when God is not honored. In the Old Testament, there are 11 fulfill, uh, prophecies that I've seen fulfilled. And I'm just going to list them for you. We're running out of time. And you can look up all of this. I've got scripture for all of this for you to study. And in your small groups or at home in a pi private study, I hope you'll spend some time with this, not to be afraid, but to be informed and to know uh, we're on the winning side. <laughs> you know, God has forgiven us. He's, he's welcomed us into eternity with him. And uh, we can watch for these things. Uh, existence of a 200 million man army in the east, that happened in the 60s in China. Redevelopment of the Roman Empire, in other words, plans for one world government. That's what the Euro and the European Union is all about. Uh, return of one pure language to Israel, Hebrew, that happened in the 1940s. Uh, rebuilding of the temple, restoration of temple worship and animal sacrifices in Jerusalem. Now, as far as I know, this hasn't happened yet. But there is a group called the Temple Mount Society they are ready to go. They've got all of the uh, Levitical robes and vestments and everything needed that's outlined in Leviticus. They could swoop in, I'm telling you, in a very short period of time, and they could build the temple and they could have sacrifices uh, to, you know, right away. So I don't know, maybe it's tomorrow or the next day, but this could happen. And there is some dispute as to whether... The Dome of the Rock is in the exact place where the temple ought to be. And so it is possible that uh, the temple could be built in a spot close by. So I don't know how that all works. But that could all, I'm just telling you, from 9-11 I know, things can change overnight. You'd be surprised. It could happen. Appearance of a red heifer is needed. So you, this is a kind of a not, this is a very technical detail. But a red heifer was needed in sacrifice. And if you, I've been reading through Leviticus, and it's pretty clear how that all is going. Did you know that in May of 1997, the first red heifer was born after 2,000 years of not being available? And now another one was born in Israel in March 2002, and now they're breeding red heifers, and red heifers are available again. That's amazing. Um, 
So, increase in knowledge and travel. You know we live in the information age. Uh, we can get anywhere in a couple of hours. Uh, return of Ethiopian Jews to Israel. The rise of Russia. Hello, and Daniel. It talks about the big bear from the north. It's going to come down. Uh, I don't know how that works. Return of Russian Jews to Israel. Technology for the mark of the beast. Do you know that all the technology exists now for the mark of the beast? In fact, I, I'm just kind of waiting for that. Now they, they have a thing about the size of a grain of rice that they can implant in your skin. And uh, they actually are using this with some Alzheimer's patients and some children in some parts of the world uh, in places where you can get a GPS reading on where they are. Uh, it's not going to be long before, and I've even seen a commercial for this, you go through uh, and you have all your groceries in your hand and you just scan your hand over the thing and just keep on going. And, uh, you know, with terrorism and uh, all of the... Um, the misuse of our information. People are getting nervous about us being hacked and they'll, they'll find a way to do something that's very personal. And it could be the mark of the beast and that's right around the corner. So I don't know that that's the last thing, but it's available, it's possible. Um, instant communication around the world is needed. Do we have that? Because everybody will see the return of Christ. And when that happens, the end draws near. So listen, I don't, I don't tell you all of that to make you scared, uh, worried. Uh, we know who holds the future, right? And he holds our hand. And so we can relax and know that God has a plan that he's working. But I heard somebody say once, and this really stuck with me, and it was kind of harsh, but I thought it was good. Get right. Or get left. And I thought, that's true. Let's get right. Get right with God. Live rightly with God. Live in such a way that whether he comes or calls, you're ready. Don't wait till the last minute. You might not have a last minute. Uh, you might go unconscious. You could get hit by a bus. You live in Venice and the driving here, oh my goodness. <laughs> right? Don't wait till the last minute because you don't know. God hasn't promised us a last chance. What he said is, uh, seek me while you may. And so, uh, I just urge you, live a life that honors God. Uh, surrender to him. There is an end coming. And it may be a personal end, or it may be the end of the world. I'm not, I don't know when, I don't know how, but uh, God has promised us that one day we're going to be gathered unto him, and we're going to spend eternity with him. Uh, be careful what you put your affections on, because this world draws us in so many directions set your heart on the things above. Let's pray. Lord, uh, we're so clueless <laughs> and we don't know. We don't know how this all works. We, we see what you've revealed to us in scripture and we think we understand how it works, but here's what we know. You got it. You got a plan and it's a good plan. It's a loving plan and you've invited us. You've given us Chance after chance after chance, surrender, come to you, trust you, accept your forgiveness, live lives that honor you. Lord, help us by the power of your spirit to be the people that you died for. Lord, we can't do this on our own. We're messed up. We're selfish. We're self-centered and misdirected, but we need the saving grace of Jesus. We need the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us. We want to represent you well. We want to be the loving arms of Jesus in a world that's hurting and struggling and misdirected. Let us be salt and light. Let us preserve this culture. Let us open the windows of heaven that your revelation and grace may come through. Lord, we thank you that you love us so much. 
and we rest in you. Lord, don't let any of us be fearful, but let us be faithful. We ask that in the mighty name of Jesus. Until you come or call. Amen. Amen. Let's rise. In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation When all is dark you help us see There is only one salvation We believe We believe Sing with us Believe in Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death, we believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe. So let our faith be more than anthems Greater than the songs we sing And in our weakness and temptations We believe We believe conversation today was very supernatural and uh, very end oriented and here's the deal just live a life that honors God every day that's that's the bottom line just be faithful to him every day live uh, I think there's a country western I should have maybe had Billy sing this live like you were dying right just be ready and uh, if you only had six months to live what how would your life be different if you knew that you only had so much time, and listen, the end is going to come. Don't let it sneak up on you. Live, live for Christ every day, and uh, we'll be good. So God bless you. Um, we got bumper stickers that say, in, in case of the rapture, this car will be unmanned. Uh, no, we don't have those.
That's a good one. But uh, listen, just, just love the Lord and serve him every day. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.